I was watching some videos last night, very interesting, about these 15-minute cities up in Oxford. Seems there was a bit of a protest. Now, I don't live in Oxford, so I haven't been able to go there and see what happened. But when you look at the videos, lots of different people filming on their phones, you could see that people were quite angry about the idea that these lockdown cities were going to be happening and that the trial was taking place. And the streets were full of people with placards and they were saying, save our streets and all this. Very laudable, very laudable to come out and, and protest. And of course, we have the right to protest in this country. However, as people were chanting that some people were getting a little bit more excited than was really good for them and the police were there on force and they were getting a bit agitated and and sometimes these protests, and I'm not saying this one in particular, but sometimes they get a bit out of hand and it can look very ugly. It's a gift, isn't it, for the mainstream media who for one reason or another, seem to be against people when they're trying to protect their liberties and their ability to travel from one place to another. So they can angle these things to make them look even worse than they really are. Of course, a few people were arrested as goes with this sort of thing. And I thought, yes, maybe there's a better way of doing this because people have the right to express themselves, but sometimes if it gets a bit nasty and like that, it's almost as if that's what they want. They want it to look nasty and that's the reason they want people to be stuck in their houses so they can't cause this sort of affray. So I thought to myself, what if people were to take a little gentle journey down to London, it's a very nice place, isn't it, the capital of England, and go and visit the Houses of Parliament and maybe dress in their best clothes, in their finery, in their Sunday best, you know, and go for a very gentle picnic. There, put a little blanket onto the grass, maybe have a teapot and a lovely little porcelain cups and some cucumber sandwiches, maybe a scotch egg and that sort of thing. Ever so nice, ever so polite, ever so gentle. Quintessentially English, you might say. No loud noises, no placards, no protesting, no chanting, just turning up to have a picnic. And then when they're sitting there and the police are coming over, go, excuse me, what are you doing? Just, we just come down for a picnic. Nothing like that. Come to have a look at the wonderful place called the Houses of Parliament, where our magnificent MPs make their decisions. And more and more people, there's loads of them, maybe a hundred thousand of them, are all setting up, being ever so polite, ever so kind. Please and thank you. Would you pass this? Would you pass that? Ever so nice. And of course, you no doubt, this doesn't normally happen. You know, most people are starting to get a bit angry. They're on the alcohol. They're getting a bit leery. But if people weren't like that, if people were really really holding themselves back, really being polite. You can imagine the MPs would be peering out of the window going, well, these people aren't so bad, are they? And maybe they would come out and actually see what was going on. And you could say, oh, good afternoon, Mr. So-and-so. Good afternoon, Mrs. So-and-so. Lovely to see you. You're looking very fine and all of that. And everyone being very polite. And then as you've lured the MPs out and the police are sort of going, well, you know, they're not really causing a fray. There's no real problems here. We, we can't really move them on. Maybe the MPs would actually engage with the people and the people could say, no, have a piece of cake. Why don't you have a sit down there? No, sit, um, Jemima, move over a bit. Would you, Henry, just budge over there a little bit? Very posh names, I know. But anyway, the MP would sit down and you could say, look, we just want to ask you a question, really. Thank you for coming out. It's very nice to see you and all that. But you seem to be implementing a whole load of policies that actually, look, me and my friends and people who live in this country, we've never asked for. Is there some sort of strange, weird laughing gas or peculiar situation that goes on inside there where you just go mad? Because these 15-minute cities, nobody's asked for. The digital IDs, nobody's asked for. The central bank digital currency, nobody really wanted. There's a number of people who've been a little bit harmed by, you know, that medical um, intervention that everybody seemed to have been mandated for. And nobody asked for it and nobody's talking about it. We just wondered, as a mass of ordinary, everyday people who are ever so polite and ever so kind, why you've done it to us. And actually, as you can see, we're very reasonable people and it doesn't seem very reasonable to have not asked us first, seeing as, you know, you serve us, whether you can actually not do that. 
and uh, we could all go back to our normal lives and not have to maybe have a picnic and cause a little bit of damage to the grass here outside the Houses of Parliament. It would be interesting, wouldn't it, just to try not being aggressive, not being shouty, not being leery and being ever so polite, like the sort of image that they put over when they're making these decisions which affect our lives. Wouldn't it be interesting just to ask them one to one? I mean, I know there's more of us than there are of them. And that's something worth remembering, isn't it? And just asking them, why have you done this to us? We never asked for it.